Dr. Aubrey de Grey, the Chief Scientific Officer of the SIMS Research Foundation and one of our GAP Summit speakers. So what do you see as the most significant gap in the research and innovation space and how do you think it should be addressed? I think the gaps in the research and innovation space do vary considerably from one area to another, from one domain to another. In my area, in the work on the biology of ageing, there are gaps at the biomedical research level in terms of understanding of the nature of the problems. There are gaps in terms of sheer credibility, in other words, in people's enthusiasm for the possibility that such work could ever succeed. And there are fundamental conceptual gaps, not only by scientists, but by the public and policymakers and so on, in terms of what the relationship between ageing and the diseases of old age really is. Uh, you divide um, your program to seven, seven uh, kind of mini gaps in, in them, I guess. Um, which of those do you find the most resistance to, and why do you think that is? The dissection of the problem of ageing into seven sub-problems that underpins the work of Stanford Research Foundation is one that is basically derives its utility from the fact that within each sub-problem there's a generic solution. But some of these solutions are much further along in development and implementation than others. So one of these things is cell loss, cells dying and not being automatically replaced. And that's basically what stem cell therapy is here to fix. So of course, stem cell therapy doesn't really have a credibility problem at all. It, we believe that we can do it for any particular application, albeit it's not necessarily very easy. At the other end of the spectrum, I would say the thing that is the most daunting, the hardest part of aging to deal with is cancer because cancer is the one that has natural selection on its side, so to speak. And sure enough, our approach, our preferred approach to combating cancer is the most ambitious, the, the, the area of sense that has the greatest credibility issues. Essentially, we feel that other people are not giving cancer the respect it deserves, they are adopting oversimplistic approaches, and while no, no one would be happier than me if we did actually get a simpler solution to work against cancer, I don't want to rely on it. Do you foresee the SIMS Research Foundation's work to come to fruition at all by 2050, or how far along do you think it will be? I think that at the moment it's possible to say that there's a 50% chance or thereabouts of really getting comprehensive implementation of the entire SENSE plan within about 20 or 25 years, so long as the next five or 10 years are adequately funded. At the moment, while we still have something of a credibility gap and something of a conceptual gap, we do really have difficulty bringing in enough resources to be able to let the science move as fast as the science allows. The funding is definitely rate limiting, and I believe that we could be going perhaps three times faster if that were not the case. Yeah. Um, so, a little bit of a controversial question, I guess. Do you see there being any implications for people living extended, lifestyle, uh, extended lifespans um, in terms of uh, economics and social implications? I think it's very safe to say that a post-aging world will be different in innumerable ways from the world we have today very much in the same way that the post-industrial world was very different from the pre-industrial world, and perhaps the differences in this case will be even more dramatic than that was. However, I do not think that we have any right to be scared of that or to hesitate and hold back from developing methods to alleviate the suffering caused by the diseases of old age any more than we would have had any reason to delay in terms of the Industrial Revolution. Um, so, what one piece of advice would you have for the leaders of tomorrow in biotechnology? I would say that the basic advice that I would have for leaders of tomorrow in biotechnology is the same in the biology of aging as it is elsewhere. The key thing is courage to be willing to work on really hard problems and to determine what you work on on the basis of how important it is rather than how difficult it is. And the second thing is to communicate to really engage in advocacy and discussion with people who are not necessarily directly related to, your, to what you're doing, but whose opinion eventually, in aggregate, makes a difference to public acceptance and public enthusiasm for what you're trying to achieve. Sort of following off of that, I guess, um, what do you think of the idea of the gap summit in terms of Grow Connect Challenge? 
I'm really impressed by this meeting. I wish I could stay for the whole thing. It's a great shame that I'm only able to stay here for today. I think that you've brought together the most extraordinary set of luminaries, among whom I'm extremely proud to be included, and I think that it could be a really big recurring event. I certainly hope it is. Thank you, Dr. Gray. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time here. Thank you.